Um, we took this engine apart. This is an early Sprite block, a thick flange. We know it's early because it lacks the fuel pump opening. And a lot of these for the Sprites uh, never intended to use a mechanical pump, so they didn't open the blocks up. We are gonna open it up as we did the other one for uh, installing the breather. Very critical to have good crankcase venting on these when it's a race engine. This is the one we're gonna turn into a straight rod engine. And then you do away with these, these offset sideways rods that we're so familiar with uh, because of the alignment of the crank pins for where the cylinders end up. But the straight rod engines have a number of advantages and we're looking forward to the availability, as I said, of the MED setup. We're also going to do the four bolt and steel caps on here. And this is just a quick chance to show, again, I harp on this a lot, the standard rear mains. Boy, there is such a lack of knowledge on setting these up. Look at how, this is a race engine. This was the original race engine out of our friend Carlos Bug Eye Sprite. And you can see a horrible step. If people remove these and then haphazardly reinstall them, you end up with you can use a razor blade here. You can see what a step there is there. A fingernail even, an incredible step. This will leak like a sieve, guaranteed. If you allow a gap here or here in the way this piece fits over the rear main cap, let's bring it over and take a look. See how it's flush? The rear main cap has the other half of this piece. When these are removed, and haphazardly installed, you've got no chance of making this seal. If you do it right, you have every chance of creating a seal that will never wear and will work indefinitely. And that's the way we like to do them. I do not like the rubber seals uh, on the ends of these because I know how to set them up properly. All right, and we'll get this block to our good friends over at Reby's and begin the process of preparing it for our fantastic straight rod race Sprite 1380. Well, just out of the parts cleaner, the start of another race engine. In this case, MED's uh, maybe the first in the US or so, one of the first certainly. This one a little modernized. Let's see how this one turns out. Well, as we start the next one, Let's take a quick look at some nice tasty bits here from our friends at MED over in England. The uh, full set of main bearing caps, uh, the four bolt center cap. Um, and what I'm, this is the first time I've had a chance to try one of these. And most of you know, I'm a big proponent of the standard seal arrangement, such as it is on these. Um, I find that uh, there's a few critical details to pay attention to setting these up, but if you do that, they work fantastic. Uh, never an issue with a rubber seal or quirky oil gets into places where it can't get back out. Um, the main thing is you look at the diameter here that the seal ends up running on. You think about high performance engines, seldom are you going to see an actual seal be much larger than the main bearing. I mean, that's that's the strength of the crank. You don't want a huge seal surface. The speed at which this contacts and passes through the seal is far greater than this would. But you really can't put a complete seal on over a larger flange. People put a great big seal back here, and if you look at the specifications of some of those seals in those very kits, they say things like maximum RPM, 3150. And you're like, hmm, 8,000 RPM race engine, maximum RPM, 3150? Come on now. This setup, no contact whatsoever. If you pay attention to setting it up, no leaks ever. If it does, that's simply telling you you're not venting your, crank your crankcase properly on one of these, and you're shoving oil out under pressure. Now, I got news for you. The seal won't hold back pressure either. But when you start getting a leak on one of these that's otherwise set up properly, that's useful information. So let's take a look at what ME did, MED did here. Yeah, that's a good one. MED did to improve this arrangement. Notice the two dowels. Now, 
it's not one of these things where, whoops, someone took it off when disassembling the engine. Whoops, the machine shop took it off when they went to clean it. I've had to give specific instruction even to my machine shop that I've used for 30 years. Don't take this plate off when I'm not line boring. So this one here does let you remove it uh, by having these dowels in place. You always achieve the perfect fit, the perfect line bore matching the main bearing bore from the actual line bore when this was bolted up. The dowels give us the convenience of being able to clean, remove, reseal. As you go to rebuild these, you can take things apart and clean them. Nice trick. We'll get ready to put our really nice crankshaft here. All right, we'll quickly show steps here. This is the uh, rear main seal upper half on top of block. We showed the dowels. Uh, what I did here is I painted a very thin layer of uh, RTV. Very thin layer. You do not want this stuff squishing into this channel in here that's critical for channeling the oil back into the engine. So a very thin painted layer. Line it up to the dowels. We're not going to use a gasket. The gaskets tend to be very inconsistently made, inconsistent thicknesses. Um, we're going to trust that our surfaces here are all flat. All right, so we'll carefully get this assembled, sneak up the Torx. I'll probably use a little bit of Loctite on these screws. I like to use a razor blade to check for uh, the surface being what's called proud. You do not want this cap, this little uh, upper piece, sticking up at all. If you go to torque the main bearing cap over this and it's sticking up kitty wampus, you're going to have issues with getting the torque down. You're going to push that away. You're going to mess up your seal arrangement. Bad news all around. This is the critical bit that this saddle lines up perfectly with the main bearing and that these ends here are absolutely in line flush with the block we're going to show little clips as we put together our very special straight rod multi-web crank sprite race engine so here's the crankshaft going into the block certainly looks different and uh, those of us used to the a series it's interesting to see the rod journals centered in the bores Nice little modern touch. So we've got a dial indicator set up here and we've been fidgeting with these, um, the center MED four bolt main cap. It's, you gotta pay some extra attention. Um, a standard cap allows the thrust uh, washer to move around pretty good in that slot. You got a lot of leeway. This thing, I had to chamfer the edges of the thrust washers to really ensure that they wasn't resting up on a corner. But we can see here, you finally have what I consider a pretty good about three thousandths just by moving it by hand. So I'd say with our assembly lube and stuff in there, we're somewhere between three and four thousandths on our end float. And you gotta be real careful with these, any kind of cap replacement, it's tough to get that, that uh, thrust surface perfectly aligned all the way around, half on the block, half on the cap. But we've got it working. Uh, we're going to continue putting the bearing caps and get everything dialed in here as we assemble the bottom end. Well, one of my favorite topics, no doubt, uh, if you follow me at all. And I like the uh, original setup, I've said. Here's how you set them up. Once you're sure that piece is flush with the block, a little bit of black silicone, a layer painted on with fingertip as you assemble it to the main bearing cap. If everything is put together correctly, it's been line board in place. You leave no gap here or here. And we make sure of that with our little dabs of RTV. This will work. It will not leak. You don't need a rubber seal dragging on the big wide flange of the crank right here like they do. This setup works. Here we go. Now, most of these uh, high performance A-series engines um, especially when you replace the bearing caps and have an option. You see how this cap here has a dual notch arrangement. You know, we have the, we have the center tang style A plus late bearings. These started with the turbo, the ERA turbos and such. They sort of decided to do away with the groove down the middle of the main bearing. The idea being, well, this is the lower side when it's holding the crank 
and doing away with the groove, why well, increases the surface area. Uh, hard to say if it really makes a difference, but still, when there's an option, um, you find that most of these caps will have dual notches to allow you to use either the early bearings or the late A plus slash turbo bearings, as we are in this case. Uh, we measured our clearance at just under one and a half thousandths. Um, a nice number for all brand new parts, of course. So let's continue with our uh, assembly here. And we'll try to show interesting little details as we make progress.